All right, so we are back with our next exciting episode of Let's Play Stellaris, where I sit on a pause screen and talk about the game more than I actually play it. So if you recall from last time, we just met a couple aliens. We have to research them with our envoys to make contact. If I don't do it, if they're another civilization, like these alpha aliens are another AI, uh, they'll contact me eventually. Uh, whereas these other ones, because they're so far away like this, these might be traitors, um, which I can't interact with anyways because I'm a devouring swarm. My preferred way of interacting with aliens is to eat them, quite literally, but we'll see. So our current objective, because I've met aliens which will inevitably be hostile because I am the scourge of the galaxy, I need to get more alloy production. I use alloys to build military installations, which are my star bases, like this one that is under construction, or like my corvettes, which are my, my war fleet. So if I want to build more corvettes, cost 75. With 813 alloy production, we're looking at like six, seven months of, six months, I guess, uh, per corvette, which is not very good. So my highest priority right now is getting some minerals to build this. And we can, we can actually buy minerals. So we have our energy, which is basically how we uh, interact with our things. It's our money. So I can just buy a thousand minerals. When I buy, costs go up. So this was one mineral for 1.3 credits. Now it's 1.56 credits. Uh, as you keep buying, things get more and more expensive. Conversely, if you sell a lot, uh, prices drop. Now this is my internal market. I don't think I can ever access the galactic stock market, so it's kind of moot. Um, depending on your economy, this is a good way to like, like the market is convenient for filling in gaps. Ideally you want to produce everything, but like if I had to right now, I could sell some food and use that to buy alloys to start building ships, um, which if someone declares war on me is what I'll have to do. So finally we get to our planet management. So I probably should check this before. This guy here is my governor. I can click him and see if I want other governors. Right now I have a unity governor, which is nice. 10% um, unity is pretty okay. I could get a, this governor who gives me society research from jobs. And that from jobs is important because if I look at my, oh, this is where it tells me how much I have stored. Okay, so see, I have 76 research stored still. Well, I'll throw back to last episode. Uh, but I make half of my energy from jobs and half of it uh, is just free. So I don't get any in these two from stations, but here I get it from stations. And because I'm aiming to play wide, I'll actually get a lot of research from stations and not jobs. So this uh, won't benefit me right now until I get worlds that have lots of jobs with researchers on them. Uh, food would be useful, uh, but I'm going to leave this one. I do like the, the unity buff and basically all of my unity comes from jobs. So this is free unity. So building on my planet, I am getting close to filling up or using all my jobs. Um, I probably have more maintenance drones than I need, so let, let's break this down. I have eight different kinds of jobs for my planet. Some jobs are on every planet, so hunter-seeker drones, these are police. They keep my other drones in line. Um, as a hive mind, I have this thing called deviancy, which is the equivalent of crime. Deviant drones stop doing their jobs and cause problems. Maintenance drones make amenities. This is my amenities up here. High amenities make your pops stable and happy and productive. Your pops get bonuses from having high stability, which comes partly from amenities. So notice that all of my pops are 14% more effective because of the stability of this planet. So having more maintenance drones, not necessarily a bad thing, but um, having extra amenities is not necessarily necessary compared to having more jobs. Tech drones 
agro drones, whatever. So you can hover on these and figure out what they do as you build different buildings and districts so you get different kinds of drones. There is an important distinction here, which is complex versus menial uh, jobs or drones, minor drones because I'm a hive. If you're not a hive, they're jobs. Uh, regular civilizations with civilian pops can't demote pops from complex jobs to menial jobs. Like if you're a scientist, and this is going to sound terrible, so I apologize. If you're a scientist working in the research lab and you lose your job, um, you don't, it takes a while for you to decide to stop being unemployed and go work in the mine or the fields. Um, and we're, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna polish that and say it's because you have, um, I don't know, like savings or something, but complex drones basically take resources, the basic resources that menial drones produce and turn them into other stuff. So like they, they all have some kind of upkeep. The, the brain drones turn minerals, which I guess is the cost of doing science, and food, which is what they need to eat to do stuff. The synapse drones turn food and energy into unity, whatever. There's always some kind of cost. Menial drones produce stuff from nothing. So these guys are out manning the big generators, which I have no idea what they generate. Maybe like we're, or we're aquatic, maybe it's hydroelectric power. Um, I didn't talk about it too much, but there's a different planet classes, like hot planets, cold planets, tempered planets. Hot planets tend to have more energy on them, which I'm assuming is solar power. Agro drones, uh, I don't have any mining districts, which I will probably need some in the future, but right now I need minerals and my two, or alloys. And my two ways of getting that are I can build industrial districts so this would give me two housing, which is important. My drones need a place to live. Two drone jobs, catalytic drone jobs, which would make me alloys. Um, or I could build a building. I could build the alloy foundry, which would do the same thing, but take up a building slot. Now, what's the difference between a building slot and a district? Your planet size determines how many total districts you can have. So because I have this crazy ocean world stuff, Civic start, ocean paradise. I start on the size 30 world, which means I can have 30 districts. And I have 20 districts available, and you'll notice I already have 10 districts. I have four, two here, six, seven, 10. So I've used up 10 of my 20. I can build 20 more districts, at which point I can't build any more districts. All districts give housing and then some kind of job, uh, a menial job. So hive districts which are very important, give you lots of housing, which your buildings typically don't give housing. So your advanced complex drones that work in the buildings generally need hive districts to support their housing. Now, as you climb up the research tree, you'll get more free housing passively. Um, but right now you'll see that my menial districts provide less housing than they do jobs. So I need some combination of hive districts and other districts in order to house drones. Housing itself is basically how many spaces you have for pops. If you run out of housing, it's your pops will still keep breeding. They'll start to overpopulate, which will decrease stability, decrease their productivity. So you always want to make sure you have enough housing to cover them. And then your drones, your pops generally need the jobs. There are ways you can cause pops to get big benefits from not having jobs which is totally fine uh, but you might not have that unlocked early game some some uh, civics I think give that but otherwise you really need it and jobs are what give you resources so unless you have some good reason not to have jobs you want to have all your drones employed all right, so we're going to build this uh, industrial district because it's currently just as good as the alloy foundry. Later, I'll get upgrades for the alloy foundry, which will make it better than the industrial district. But that's my priority. Um, sometimes I'll pre-build all of my districts on planets when I have lots of resources because they take forever to build. Notice this takes 480 days to build, which is the minimum amount of time I have to wait before I can 
start benefiting from that building. Our lookouts have detected All right, so let's an go. Got anomaly there. Got this guy. He should be building mining stations down there. I should be building stations up there. And we're going to kind of pay attention to our, our alloys here. Ideally, we want to get... 200 alloys. I'm going to move my combat fleet over to the Spherum system to keep these aliens in check. I'm going to ignore that because its research time is too long. Got this alpha alien flying around, scanning my stuff. I'm going to show him what happens to people who get into my territory. I have another tradition, which I'm going to use for my bonus pop. I probably shouldn't be we grow ever investing stronger. in this as hard as I am, because I can't make use of it. Like, I want to expand and take planets, but if I don't find ocean worlds, they're not really worth it to me. Like, look at this Arctic world. What good does that do me? I do still want to claim planets though, because, or systems that have planets, because I can terraform them later. So one of my priorities will be to get terraforming technology and to have the energy to support it. Oh yeah, let's nab some aliens. So, nabbing the aliens is usually frowned upon, um, but because I'm a ravenous horde, the uh, aliens from the center range. So because this guy was in my territory, I'll do that. 180 is a fine amount of time to spend. Um, I could do bad stuff to him. Want to colonize this? All right. So let's let's read what this is here. <laughs> uh. All right. So I I did capture an alien from presumably this science vessel here. Um, I guess I took the whole ship. So I wonder if that... Oh, from the Birkin Mars system. Weird. Um, so you can pick how you go forward. You can interrogate them. You can vivisect them. Because I'm a devouring swarm, I have this, uh, this other option down here. And we're going to go for that. We're going to eat them. Now they're hostile to me because... I kidnapped and ate them. It checks out. Uh, but I got 50 influence from that and 200 minerals, uh, which I intend to wholeheartedly use. Do I have another sign ship Alex down there? Okay. I'm not a huge fan of this, this layout still. We'll check on the archaeological site. So I can click on here to look at it. Um, the archaeology is a mini game. It's actually the same mini game as uh, infiltration. So you have a an asset, in this case my scientist, working on a mission. He has to break through, or she has to. Let me think. Karsh is Karshbrian. Karshbrian has to break through. So every turn they roll a die, basically. That die can be, I forget, a one and an eight, I think. We can do math. I think it's one through ten. One through ten die that they get through it. Uh, on a, find a good example here. This is past. All right, so we'll, we'll look at this. So this is the very first roll. I rolled a three. This was harder than my scientist because my scientist is a like level two or something. Uh, and I failed. I did not get enough uh, progress to advance or enough points to advance. If I can get between a six and a 10 on here, I get clues. And every clue is a bonus that you add to your next roll. So right now I have uh, a skill bonus of two because I'm level two. I have seven clues, so I get plus nine on my rolls. And this is a 40% breakthrough chance, so I... Okay, here's a, 
explanation of how this works. Um, so if I get a 14 or more, I finish the chapter. If I get less than that, but above a six, I get clues. And if I get less than a five, which I literally can't roll uh, because I get plus seven on my uh, rolls, then it's fine. So my, uh, because of difficulties too and my skill bonuses too, these uh, these cancel. So I'm really just cruising on my clues here. And this is how long it takes. So he rolls a die every, I don't know, 70, 80 days, probably every two or three months. Oh, that's not how math works. 46 to like 90 to 100 days. All right, let's let this happen. So I have my new star base. Um, star bases you can build modules on. There are really, th okay, that's a good sign. We'll get back to that. There are three directions, maybe four directions, but there's, never mind. There's a bunch of directions you can take star bases. Um, you can use them as shipyards. So these are places that can build ships. Generally, shipyards are good. You want a couple of them. You can build multiple shipyards per star base. So if I build two star bases here, I can build two ships at a time. Generally, you want to specialize. So if you have a shipyard, you probably want all of your modules to be shipyards or whatever you're going for. You can build anchorages. These increase your fleet capacity. So I have 26 fleet capacity. If I build an anchorage, it goes up by four. You can also get a building down here that increases that to six. Uh, so you can build anchorages, which are star bases that are entirely anchorages. Those help up your fleet. If you're trying to kill people or you want a big fleet, you need anchorages. No other great reliable way to increase your fleet capacity. You do get more through research, but it's kind of limited. You can build energy star bases. So for me, that just means building solar panels. Depending on how much I'm struggling with my economy, I might have to build solar panels. If you're non-gestalt consciousness, instead of solar panels, you have trade networks. So your planets and systems can generate trade and you have to connect them with star bases to form a trade network. And every like trade station you build increases the trade range of a star base. Uh, because I want this to protect me against invasions from this direction, I'm gonna build weapons on it. So I'm gonna build a gun battery and a missile battery. And I was saying, I don't like to put missiles on my Corvettes because it's too much of a cost. I don't mind putting them on star bases. Um, they have long range, so they'll attack enemies before they get into range. If the enemy doesn't have point defense, great. If they do have point defense, and I'm worried about it, which the only way I would realize this is if I'm watching my starbase and I'm seeing the missiles get shot down, or I'm reading the battle reports. Um, whatever. There are buildings you can build on top of the modules. I don't care for any of these right now, um, because A, I can't afford them, and there okay the the target uplink computer I usually build uh, if I think it's gonna do a lot of combat the communication jammer is also useful notice it has this combat disengage chance penalty on it this traps ships in your system longer so that you can murder them and without the jammer it's the enemy ships will escape or more of them will escape each time they come in and you'll have to <coughs> bless me you'll have to uh, kill them again the next time they come back fully repaired so communication jam is useful mm, disruption field generator not crazy about generally hit points shield hit points only matter if you're fighting someone that's really specialized in shield otherwise you still have to chew through their armor and their other things I'd rather start shooting at them sooner than that. I don't bother at all with gestation chambers. Um, maybe late game when I have a lot of ship upkeep to worry about, I'll care about it. But early game, mid game, not a high priority. Like my fleet currently uses up. Um, where is that? Seven. Seven energy. Uh, which is a lot, but I think there's a flat cost in there too for some reason. I'm not sure. Resource silos. If I don't know what to build, like if I have an anchorage, I'll put a resource silo on it, and that just increases my my f caps up here. All right. 
so that's going. Uh, not a great use of my resources, but whatever, I have to wait. I noticed that my um, district finished and my drone switched from being the maintenance drones to being catalytic drones. So I do still want more production. So I'm going to build another industrial district. I'm probably going to have to stop there or wait for my pops to grow out more because if I, when my next two drones swap over, I'm going to lose two more maintenance drones, which is going to drop my amenities by eight for each. And then my new drones will take up amenities. So I'll be really close to breaking even for amenities and I don't want to have unrest on my, my capital. Now I do have new pops assembling, so it's probably not a huge uh, fear or a reasonable fear, but we'll see. We have our archeological dig update. So whenever my scientist breaks through you get an update, you do have to come here and click this button. If you don't click this, it will not advance. Um, so the ball organism or bowel organism, this is uh, one of the precursors. So every time you play, you'll come across uh, at least one earlier civilization. And they're like uh, the remnants of it. So if you like Stargate, they're like the ancients. Um, Star Wars would be like Finding the Old Republic, Star Trek, I don't have a good one there. Um, but little leftover pieces, and if you find them and put together the puzzle, you get some big bonus from it. Uh, you get this little weird icon here, Artifacts, for completing excavation, so I get five artifacts here. You can spend them in this uh, relics page to do stuff. I don't have anything good to do with them, so I'm just going to hoard them for now. Um, but later you can spend them to get bonuses. Right, so we'll just let the game chug along a little bit. Door star system. So notice right now this has a, a combat strength of 589 i can look at its details it's got all these stats here you can't control the the base stats of your star bases anymore in the original version of stellaris you could choose these weapon loadouts and these things now it just automatically populates these which for better or worse is what it is um Eventually, you get FDL inhibitors for your star bases, which make them real choke points. Right now, enemy fleets could fly through the system and not engage the star base, uh, which is actually a good reason to build the target uplink computer, just to try to force them to engage it. The other thing you can do is you can keep ships in those systems and try to use them to lure them into star base range. Have these guys uh, build more stuff. Uh, track of our science vessels. I don't really love this uh, layout of we fleets grow I have ever here. stronger. All right, so we have completed our first contact. On this guy we are being contacted by aliens they uh they don't like me and uh i'm gonna do this we sense prey so whenever you meet enemies you generally have three options because i'm a ravenous swarm i only have mean options but if like a let's get along option which gives you an initial bonus to diplomacy with them that wanes you have a uh, a uh, cautious one, which gives them a penalty to spying on you. And you have an aggressive one, which gives you a bonus to spying on them. So, these guys already hate me. There's no reason to do anything about it. Same thing with all of these dudes. Um, it seems like I identified all of them. What do we got here? We've got... 
I have no idea what this is. This must be another AI. And then this is also an AI? That doesn't make any sense. They're in a federation together? What happened to these dudes? I really thought... Yeah, okay, so we have the right Sovereignty. But for some reason I can't see that. Oh, okay, well, uh, there we go. Okay, now we have an idea of their borders. So this is uh, annoying. I really want to survey this so I can get in here and box him in before he gets any farther. Uh, and that'll actually be really good for me because he has nowhere to go. Like if I colonize this system, this system, this system, sometimes they'll try to jump over you. Um, he'll be boxed in. But unfortunately, my science ships can only go so fast. Oh, okay. So I have, I think this is part of Utopia, uh, but it adds in the Leviathans. So I have found the Affinity Equation Infinity, uh, which is a gigantic technological sphere, and if I get lucky, I can uh, do its quest line and get some cool bonuses. So that's, uh, that's nice. We are but loads of dust. Star base. These guys closed charged. their borders to me. I want to. I'm pretty sure my borders are closed by default, but I want to make absolutely sure they are. So we're gonna go to policies and just check. So my diplomatic stance is hunger, which just means I will eat everyone. I can't change that because that's my rapid and swarm. War philosophy can't change that. Orbital bombardment. I don't know why I would change this. Um, this changes how quickly you can siege planets. If you make it selective, you will cause... You'll, you'll kill enemy armies faster while causing less devastation, I guess. Uh, first contact procedure, again, I eat people. Border status, alright, and I can't open them, so it's great. So they you can never come in here. Purging, I eat people for purging, so if you're not a drone, you get eaten. Sorry. This production policy tab is actually pretty good to keep note of. So this goes back to those population, those pop jobs we talked about, the drone jobs. So by default, there's no penalty on either of them, but you can shift production. If you need more of these resources, you can do extraction focus. If you need more of these resources, you can do the manufacturing focus. Um, I would be cautious in playing with this because like shifting to manufacturing focus can be good but remember that this number here is a net so like if I were to decrease my food production by 20% I would I'd be okay I'd still have like a hundred or so food production left maybe 95 so it'd still be positive, but barely. So we want to be cautious if we play with that. Why don't we build? We'll, we'll hold off and build. We grow ever stronger. Okay, so now we just kind of Space wait updated. for things to happen. Intellectual booty. Send this guy over to do that. Okay. Light exploration probes event. Oh, oh. Kind of annoying, I think. All right, we're gonna Our open our sublight probes. An we will. Who is this? I think this is our other guy. This is a DABA system. Yeah, I'm sure you can research that. Now, this annoys me because his ship is probably going to research all of these planets before mine, um, which means he'll get all of the anomalies. So I'm going to be petty and just go ahead and manually survey all these other ones first and then come back for that one. Guy off to go start a whole bunch of other stuff. Alright, 
There we go. Ultimate and petty. I have my research here. I do stronger. want more food because booty. I turn food into alloys, which I'm going to need for this inevitable, inevitable war. Uh, I'm going to take the fusion reactor here. It was really tempting to get this research station output, but because I'm thinking about war, I'm getting these level 2 coil guns, I'm going to need more power for my ships. Alright, got some free energy there. We'll increase pop growth. That's a big buff. That'll, uh, that'll help a lot. Guy can build some mining stuff. Something in that system. I don't think I can declare rivalries with enemies. Yeah, no, I can just uh, declare war on them. So, let's talk about our... I don't have any envoys doing anything right now. And I'm probably going to go to war with this guy. So what I want to do is I want to spy on him. I'm going to go to my espionage. I'm going to send an envoy over here. It's going to take him time to set up his, uh, his network. But now that he's here... He's going to build up Infiltration and Intel. And I can spend Intel and Infiltration once he's set up to do operations, which are like little missions. Uh, and these are exactly like the uh, archaeology digging I do. I send an asset. In this case, I think my envoy or maybe no one at all until I get assets, which would be these guys, to... Uh, do the mission, whatever the mission is. So this is how much infiltration level I need. Um, I think I also spend it to get it to do this. So you can't just spam these. You have to build up the infiltration, do the mission, then rebuild the infiltration. So we'll let that cook. So that spy network's been formed. Uh, notice this now Research goes up. Research complete. And then once it gets high enough, we'll send him we our ever stronger. mission. We have our new coil gun. We're going to get this Corvette hull bonus. And this is because our fleets are going to be entirely Corvettes for a little bit. And 100 extra Corvette hull makes them like 10% stronger. All right, now that we have charted this system, we're going to send over our construction ship. If I was smarter, I would have pre-done this. And we want, to, we want to snipe this before he gets his construction ship up there. Once we have that, we'll build a... Oh, see, there it is. That was close. So we got our construction in first, which means he can't build his ship here. Oh, okay, we uh, finished surveying that, which I was not expecting. Runar Ruins. Okay, so now we have found another colony. There is new information in the situation log. So I'm going to go to my situation log, which is this key F2. Um, I opened it a little bit earlier, but this keeps track of lots of exciting stuff. So we have these anomalies that I've skipped over. I'm lying about that. I'm lying about that. These are uh, archaeological dig sites. These are my skipped over anomalies. Notice that I'm skipping them because they are hard as heck. Level 6 anomaly, I can't do that. Uh, I have events that are ongoing, so the Technosphere, I have the Sublight Probes, which I really meant to turn on. Um, so with, if I turn those on, I can see where those probes are. So they're down here. Um, I don't care for this event because it's annoying, but it is what it is. Change this guy's orders. I'm gonna have him stay like that. Come back up there. And then that's as many as he can queue. Fine. Now that this guy's done with his thing, we're gonna send him on to his next quest. So he's gonna go over to this battle colony and investigate it. Uh, which was the reward from the the in archaeology dig we just did. Now, to find the precursors, there's usually some set of conditions you have to do. I've never done the bow before, so I'm not sure what theirs are. The other ones, you usually have to find like six or so 
uh, artifacts or not even that, but like anomalies from them. And then you can do whatever you want. All right, so we're going to pick up where we left off, kind of. Now that I have more alloy production, I'm going to start spending them. So I have my fleet here. Uh, and let's talk about what these number means. So this here is the fleet's combat power. It's got 119 combat power. I'm going to send this up to here. Uh, my star base here, this has the 1.2k. This is the one that I built these modules on. So these did double its firepower. And then I'm going to put a target uplink computer on here too in the hopes that if something tries to fly into the system, it will get targeted by the star base rather than just escape and wreak havoc. But so we have we have three numbers here. We have the fleet strength, we have the command usage. So this is using three out of twenty slots in this fleet. Uh, and then I don't actually know what this little three is. It looks like it's telling me there's three corvettes there, but oh, I think it's how many total ships are in the fleet. Um, so we're going to go to our fleet manager, which is this F10 key here. We can get to it here. We can get to it here. Uh, and here's where you can really dictate your fleet. So before on Stellaris, you had to manually build your fleets. Now we have the, the fleet manager that lets us design our fleets as I want. So I could, for instance, shift click and add 10 fleets to this. I think if I control click it, yeah, it brings it up to the max. So like, let's add three. So I can tell Stellaris how big I want this fleet to be. It'll tell me, okay, well, based on that, it'll be the strong. Um, and it'll call, tell me how much it costs. So if I want to build this fleet, I need 1,200 alloys, 1,275. I could currently spend 12, 225 to build three ships. Um, and I am going to want to do this at some point. Um, Honestly, I might just do it now. I think I am going to do it now. So we'll we'll click this reinforce. That'll put these in queue. And I'm doing it now because I only have one shipyard. If I had two shipyards, which I should do, let's uh, let's trade this solar panel for shipyard. This will cause the space to double produce, and then. If I forget to keep on top of my alloys, I can quickly rebuild my fleets if I need it. So this is building. I don't need one yet, but when war breaks out, I'm going to want an admiral. And we can assign a leader just like anyone. Admirals, based on their skill level, give passive bonuses, do ship stats, um, and then they have a trait. So traits I really like. I actually really like this cautious trait. Um, it's real tempting to just buy this Admiral now, but I don't think war is going to break out right away. Uh, other traits that I really like are things that give sublight speed. So there's like gale speed and uh, the just the fire rate one also give a little bit. Things that make your ships move faster are tactically useful. Things that give them more weapon range are combat useful. Especially because I like to build long range ships later game. And my strategy is entirely kill the enemy before they get into weapons range. And if they get into weapons range, well, you're going to take some damage. So let's go. Okay, okay. So the calculator wants to talk to us. And. <laughs> Sorry, that's what your race calls the, uh, the Infinity Orb. Um, so we, we do want to do this. We want to talk to the Infinity Orb. Um, so I'm going to send this guy over to do it right now. And if you control shift click, you can insert an order at the top of their order queue. So now this guy's going to do reaching the orb. Um, it is a little unfortunate because that order takes time to implement. Like I think it's either a full year or even two years to do that, which means my exploration is going to slow the heck down. Um, so I don't, I don't have the unity for it to keep building and I don't have the pops to get more unity right now. If I wanted more unity, what I would do is I would have to build these, um, synaptic nodes. 
I would do a sensorium set because it would synergize. All right, if I had a planet that was entirely dedicated to making unity, that would be nice. Since my homeworld's not specialized yet because I don't have enough planets to specialize. Let's settle a planet too. So I have this potentially habitable world here. It's size 13, which is really terrible, actually. <laughs> you don't want size 13 worlds. Um, but I don't have a lot of choices. So ideally, I want to send over a colony ship to colonize it. I don't have the, the alloys for it. For the sake of pushing things along, I'm going to buy some alloys. So now I have the alloys for it. You can name it. Uh, notice that it'll tell you the habitability of your species. So um, this species has 85% habitability. Because it's under 100, there are penalties. Um, the only, and that's entirely because of this non-adaptive thing. Well, it's not entirely. But we're going to just take it. I don't bother renaming my planets normally. But you can rename your planets. You can rename your systems if you want. Like, click this, change its name. Got a new counter with some freaky... Oh, okay, so this is a uh, special system. These are... No, these are... Oh, they're just the, the space whales, the Tiaki. Now these are amoebas, these are space amoebas. Alright, how do we... So we're gonna send our envoy to investigate these. The space amoebas, this system's way too powerful. Notice these have, like, thousands of fleet score and my little fleet has 100 and when I double this it's going to be 200. So this system is basically worthless to me and I'm going to restrict it. So this means my ships will do anything possible to avoid flying through the system which is useful because you don't want like a supply line, not a supply line, but like a let's say my ships are being manufactured here and they had to go here. I don't want them to fly through here and fly into the system one at a time and get murdered. I want them to fly around it. Uh, that's really useful whenever you find systems that have these anomalies in them. Alright. It'll be a while until that guy can do anything, so I'm going to send that construction ship over to build those, and then I'm going to order it to just fly back here. Alright, we're going to move over here. Ideally, I want to fill the these in. Is finished. Um, and now we have an archaeology site. Oh, gotta excavate that. And now he'll he'll excavate that. I'm pretty happy actually that I got a archaeologist now stronger. as my starting dude. Starting scientist just because I do need that uh archaeology since I have one, two, three, four or hopefully five archaeology sites to do. But he's going to be busy for the rest of his life. One thing I want, but I haven't gotten yet, is this automatic exploration. Uh, if you don't care about achievements, which is totally reasonable, if you don't like Iron Man mode, you can get mods that automat that like unlock this. And honestly, stronger. it's dumb that your highly paid scientists can't figure out what system they should go to next. Like, why don't they have that autonomy? Alright, we've got one, two, five left to survey there. I'm going to keep checking on things. I've got increasing amounts of stuff here. I do want to build this other starport. A special I'll project upgrade this. Is finished. Okay. And now here's the unfortunate thing. So because I'm a high or a gestalt consciousness, I can't communicate with the the infinity friend. So normally you would have uh, other options here, like you can talk to the calculator. But here, I'm just going to try to hack new it, information which in is log. really not great. I'm actually going to swap out my scientist. So I don't know if this matters, but because this guy has computing on him, I'm just going to have him do this quest. Sometimes the type of... Uh, trait you have affects your outcome for anomalies. 
and we're just gonna hope. And it is important that I, when I had that pause, I switched them at the same time, because if this guy was trying to do stuff while um, the game was running, his orders would cancel because he's doing stuff that needs the guy there. All right, so whenever you meet one of these, uh, I don't really know what to call them, like the, the non-player-y aliens, monsters, uh, you have two options. You either have a, you can study them more option, or a we can kill them option. Um, I usually go with the study the more options because these give you passive bonuses. We are being contacted by aliens. So, for instance, I can do the space amoeba study. Now, this would take 67 months, and it costs 2,000 society research. And this depends entirely on what my uh, society research is. It's because I have 22; it takes forever. Um, not ideal. But, hey, what can we do? So, I'm going to leave this for now. Because it's more important to me to get other research than that bonus. And I know that bonus is just going to be a 5% boost to evasion. Because it always is. A system has been charted. Oh, I do want to mention one other thing, which is uh, I cheated here. So instead of moving the scientist's ship that had this scientist on it here, I just swapped the leaders of the boats. And swapping the leaders teleports them across we fast distances. Similarly, removing them does it too. If you jump your scientist into a system and you know they are going to get murdered there, you can call them back <laughs> before they die. And everything will be okay. Alright, so I'm going to finish off this tree. I can open up multiple tradition trees if I want. I think there's a penalty if you do that. Um, maybe not anymore, but it's definitely worth it to me to finish off trees and get the uh, full bonus the ascension perk than it is to move on right, and below my nose there so if you notice the uh map skipped around it's because that's where my pause button is so new research deck new stuff um these food processing facilities are pretty nuts i think if they're the ones i'm thinking of yeah so they increase how effective agri drones are uh, this hydroponic farm one is also really good because you can build these on space stations. Sorry, the hydroponic bay. On space stations and use extra star base modules to get food. They also give you farms, which are buildings that produce a lot of food. So both of these are really good, especially since I use food to make alloys. So I'm really torn here. They're both really good. I might go for this one because it has an edict and I don't have an edict yet. Now I'm gonna go with this because I can it's cheaper, it's easier to build star bases than it is to get more pops. Alright, speaking of which I do have a, a star base available. So I'm gonna build a star base over my colony. Um, and this is just there's no particular reason I want to do this. Because I'm a devouring swarm, I don't have a trade network. I don't have to worry about where my star bases really are, except for strategic reasons. Otherwise, I do want to just have bunches of free floating star bases around so that I can benefit from anchorages and free energy and whatnot. Dang. Oh, you know, I think this, uh, well, we'll find out. That's that's pretty cool. Like uh, I really like the the lore in the game. I just skip over a lot of it because I know most of it. All right, so the valve torch that world for some reason. Continue and check. 
these guys are all busy checking on my hive so my hive now has no jobs on it or no available jobs the next pop that spawns would be unemployed i don't want that i want him to have a job um now i have to decide where are my priorities eventually i want to specialize planets and use them to build particular resources so i can take advantage of planet specializations but for right now, since I only have one planet and my second one is cooking, uh, I need to build as I need them. So I am probably going to need food soon. So I should build another agrodrome or agri district. Then after that, probably more alloys. You can never have too many alloys. What have we here? I mean, you can, but it's like, is it really a problem? No. Especially because you can sell them. Alloys sell well. So, I did not read what that was. Um, I do think this is a good pausing point, just because we are going into 50 minutes here, and I'm not editing these, so that's just a lot of Stellars to watch. I talk fast, so even if you watch it at high speed, it's sometimes hard to follow. Uh, so here we're getting ready for war with this guy. We're buffing up our fleet. We're ramping up our ally production. We are going to have to start buying army soon, which costs minerals. Um, and then we can think about messing up these three whatever they are. I think they're part of the Federation together, which makes me feel like this guy is some kind of thing. Alright, anyways, we will see you next time.